I Have This Old Gun is presented by the official rare coin and bullion dealer of the National Rifle Association, Universal Coin and Bullion. Theodore Roosevelt's saber is unlike any other 1872 Army officer cavalry model saber that you'll encounter. Uh, first off, is keeping with most of the things TR owned in his life, it is of the very highest grade. And considering that he was uh, Assistant Secretary of the Navy before the war broke out, uh, it's quite possible that he had this saber made custom for him. This is the only one I've ever seen that has an actual shark skin uh, hilt to it instead of the standard cavalry brown or black leather hilt that, that you normally encounter. Now, white shark skin uh, hilted sabers or swords uh, were very common with the naval service going all the way back to the 1855 model uh, naval officer's pattern even well before that. Uh, the shark skin kind of denoted Navy service. And so we think that this uh, cavalry saber uh, with the shark skin hilt uh, was something that kind of carried over from his term as Assistant Secretary of the Navy. The saber itself uh, holds such a tight provenance to Theodore Roosevelt in the fact that it does appear in photographs, it is the same sword, and also it has an etching on it that was added to the blade after, uh, after the uh, famous battle and after the American public had become well accustomed to the heroic charge up San Juan Hill, uh, Theodore Roosevelt and the Rough Riders were a household name. There was something done to the blade to kind of commemorate its, its history uh, in, this, in this pivotal battle of the Spanish-American War. Um, they engraved at the end of the blade, carried by Colonel Roosevelt, 1st United States Volunteer Cavalry, Santiago, 1898. Now, the sword might not have been used by him in combat, but it's more of an ornamental purpose at this point. It, it holds a provenance showing uh, Theodore Roosevelt, his military background, his history as a, as a cavalryman, and uh, just his, uh, his pivotal role in the formation of the Rough Riders and their success on battle. Uh, on July 1st, 1898. When we think about the Rough Riders, we think about their famous charge up Kettle and San Juan Hills. But really, this was a cavalry unit, but one that was forced to leave its horses in Florida when they took on the Spanish in Cuba. Cavalry sabers, since the, the dawn of, of cavalry, uh, you know, the, the impact of cavalry is to have a large, very solid wall of uh, angered aggressors descend upon an opponent armed with uh, something sharp to cut their heads off. Uh, and in, in the case of the saber, it was a lot heavier. It had a, a thicker blade. Uh, than most of the other types of swords or sabers available at the time for different branches of the service because it was expected that you would be riding at full gallop and you'd be able to impale or behead your opponent. Um, while it looks cool in the movies today and in the uh, old uh, woodcut line engravings of the 19th century, uh, generally that wasn't the case in fact on the battlefield. Uh, by 1898, the cavalry saber was uh, more ceremonial, I would say, than anything else. And in particular, for an officer, uh, the saber was was a badge of office. Uh, the sabers carried by officers were more ornate; uh, they were often decorated, uh, and they could often even be pieces of jewelry, especially the finer quality swords. So it's, it, the saber, perhaps more symbolic. Uh, at this point uh, than a practical military weapon, 
but nonetheless, Theodore Roosevelt took his saber to Cuba. Uh, he tripped over the thing. It was, it was, it was with him uh, it, early in the campaign in Cuba until he too realized that for uh, uh, cavalry fighting his infantry, yeah, probably not something of value. He took his Stetson hat uh, that he purchased at Frank Brothers in San Antonio while he was training the Rough Riders and staying at the Manger Hotel uh, and his 1872 Saber and placed those in the antlers of, of one of his prized elk that he had hanging in the great north room of, the, uh, of Sagamore Hill. And the sword and the hat stayed hanging from those antlers from the time the, uh, the original elk was hung there in 1905, 1906. Uh, until it, they came down recently uh, during the, the renovation of the house and were transported here to the National Firearms Museum for our exhibit on trappings of an icon. I have this old gun brought to you by Universal Coin and Bullion, the official rare coin and bullion dealer of the National Rifle Association. Visit us online for other I have this old gun videos at AmericanRifleman.org.